Paris, une fois à Paris. Vous avez vu dans le pays de mystique. Then we move to Article 34. It's a technical thing. This is the hierarchy. I think we can skip that one. Let's move to Article 35. The composition of the cabinet. Cabinet shall consist of the president, the vice president, prime minister, deputy prime minister, if that office is filled, and such other ministers from the members of the National Assembly, including members nominated under Article 46.1b, Hero, for the purposes of administering and executing the functions of the government. What Article 46.1b says is that the president may appoint six members. We're proposing in this amendment that they be eight. So this is where it has already been there, that they can be appointed as cabinet ministers. So what is your cabinet? Your cabinet would be your president, your vice president, your prime minister, if there is a minister, sorry, if there is a deputy prime minister, but it's not mandatory. But there is a minister of foreign affairs by operation of international law, and then you have your minister of defense and minister of trade. So that would be your cabinet that you must have. But your prime minister, I mean your deputy prime minister, is an optional. And this is reflected in the second um, sub article, 35 sub 2, which says the president may if he or she considers it to be necessary or expedient, also appoint a deputy prime minister. So this is to make it absolutely and abundantly clear that the vice president, no, sorry, the deputy prime minister is not a mandatory appointment. Then we move to Article 36. This is where we outline the functions of the prime minister. The prime minister shall be the leader of government business in parliament, coordinating the work of the the cabinet, and that is the now we add as head of administration and shall perform other functions as may be designated by the president or the vice president. So, this is to clearly separate, as I indicated, the function of being the deputy to advise and to assist, and the one who's the leader of government business in parliament attends parliament is not with the president at the presidency. So, this is trickling the power down. The Prime Minister now has more functions now. Previously, you would have heard Prime Minister doesn't have powers, whatever. They have the powers, but that role is being delineated now clearly. Then you go to Article 46. Article 46 deals with the composition of the National Assembly. There are currently 72 members elected directly and six appointed by the president. The proposal seeks to increase them from 72 to 96, and from the six that are appointed to eight, just two more. Why? Population dynamics, secondly. There have been I mean, suggestions received, you must have read it in the newspapers, that the executive is apparently dominating the legislation. So to dilute that, you would then put more members in the National Assembly, and obviously your cabinet would not be 80 people. So you would have more backbenches and there are committees. We had considered the proposal of removing the executive totally from the National Assembly, but the argument seems to be convincing that the culture of democracy where a minister stands up and is held accountable, questions are asked by political parties and they have to answer, is much more beneficial. And in any event, the separation of powers that is spoken of is not an absolute separation of powers. But with this, just some of the considerations, so that it was considered, it just wasn't adopted. Then we move to article, the insertion thereof is then article 1A after that one, it's just to clarify that every Namibian citizen who has the qualifications described in Article 17 Euro shall be entitled to vote in the elections for members of the National Assembly, it referred to in sub Article 1A and subject to sub Article 47, be eligible for candidature as a member. And then subject to Article 1C, the members of the National Assembly, referred to in Article 1B, are entitled. We, if because you increase the number then in the National Assembly, you also have to increase the quorum. So that quorum has moved from 37 to 53. The same ratio, it is 51%. However, 
because all the time parliament you would have heard has to be adjourned because there are not enough members we have ministers they have traveled committee members of the national assembly backbenchers also travel so the quorum is being moved to two quorums one quorum to take decisions and a lower quorum just to sit and talk this is in keeping with many if i don't want to say all because i haven't seen all of them but many parliaments around the world in a country like India, you have 550 parliamentarians, but their lower threshold is 55 members, and they can even take decisions. In our situation, we're saying only 28, but those ones only for the discussion, not for taking decisions. Then we move to the National Council. The numbers currently coming from the National Council are two people from every region. So if you have currently 13 regions, 2 times 13 is 26. Now it is going to be increased to 3 people from 3 members from every region. So we'll have 14 regions times 3, that will be 42. Then what you have is a recognition that the, when we started off in 19... Um, 94, we had 95 constituencies. Now there are 121 constituencies. So it allows for an increase in the number of uh, the, the, um, the representation of the people. But you can't make it four because if you want to achieve, I know women have made this recommendation, some women groups, to say that they should be four for 50 50. You can't do that because it's this is a different election. It's not a party list. It's first past the post. And the example that I was given by Diane Hubbard was that if you have in window 10 constituencies and one party fills, I mean, uh, uh, fields as candidates, five men and five women, and another party, five men and five women. Now, when I have filled men, you have filled women, and all the men win you then can't achieve the 50-50 that we want to achieve because it's first past the post. Then you move over to the what we did with the National Assembly proposed, we also proposed for the National Council, two type of a quorum. So when they want to take decisions in the National Council, they shall have a quorum of two, um, a third, sorry, a quorum of a majority. And then if they want to uh, just discuss, they need at least a third. That is a third of the 42. And there may be only one seat left. How do you break that tie? So that tie, we suggest, since we didn't get a better proposal, that it be broken by awarding it by lot. We could have said you give it to the lowest or whatever, but I mean, the popular one is you throw a dice, flip a coin, play Amagusa or something, and then you come to the determination. Yeah, let's play Amagusa. Um, then the transitional provisions are technical. I'm not going to get into them. And the commencement. So the provisions that deal with the increase in the national assemblies, increase in the national council, the composition and obviously the quorums, the vice president, all those would wait until the National Council's term of office expires, the National Assembly's term of office expires, and that the current president's term of office expires. So the incoming president would then be in a position to appoint a vice president. But after this is passed, it wouldn't mean that the current president, sitting president, would then appoint a vice president, or that the political parties now in the National Assembly can start filling the seats. I think we'll be Prime Minister of, of 